To many people, functional training and bodybuilding are antithetical. The two lie at completely opposite ends of the functional spectrum. Functional training, of course, is all about training to get better at things. That could mean getting better for your sport, or it could mean training to avoid injury and improve energy for everyday tasks. Bodybuilding, conversely, is about looking better. Big biceps therefore come at the expense of good mobility. Giant legs are more important than having enough cardio to get up the stairs. And for all these reasons, many people believe that they are faced with a choice. Aesthetics or performance. Either look good or move good. This choice, however, is an illusion. Firstly, bodybuilding is far more functional than many people give it credit for. The notion that bodybuilders have fake muscle or anything like it is nonsense, and usually just an excuse used by those people who secretly wished they looked a little bit bigger. Bodybuilders tend to use submaximal loads with higher rep ranges. So if a bodybuilder is capable of benching 150 kilograms, they might use 100 kilograms for eight reps. This is suboptimal for strength gains, and it leads to muscle that is somewhat less dense and more puffy, hence accusations of fake muscle. The science behind this has something to do with myofibrillar versus sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. This is a somewhat controversial debate, full of bro science, but the long and short of it is that training with max weights leads to thicker muscle fibres. This is the process of breaking down muscle fibre and building it back up. Conversely, bodybuilding likely increases fluid retention in the muscle cells and increases glycogen stores. To reiterate, there's no evidence of sarcoplasmic or myofibrillar hypertrophy as distinct entities. It's far more likely that both these forms of hypertrophy occur simultaneously, in all cases, alongside countless other mechanisms. But it's also true, anecdotally, that bodybuilders do have puffier muscles, lower strength, and also greater strength endurance. But that strength endurance is the point I want to focus on. This is attributable to those increased glycogen stores, which draw more fluid into the muscle coincidentally. There's no such thing as a non-functional muscle, and there's no such thing as a non-functional adaptation. Evolution doesn't care about 18-inch biceps for their own sake. Having puffy muscles, then, must serve some purpose. And that purpose is muscle endurance, allowing you to exert strength over a long period. This makes perfect sense, as it adheres to the said principle, specific adaptations to impose demands. Bodybuilders train with submaximal weights for much higher repetitions, Therefore, they are able to exert strength for longer than powerlifters who practice calling upon their strength for one huge effort. As I've stated time and time again, strength endurance is more useful, more often, than max strength. When was the last time, outside of the gym, that you had to lift something so heavy you could only manage one repetition? Remember, even strength endurance is specific. You increase the number of mitochondria in specific muscles, you improve your efficiency controlling specific muscle groups and motor patterns. So if you want to get better at holding a position for an extended period of time, the best thing you can do is hold that position under resistance for a significant period of time. Bodybuilding style pump training therefore builds real usable strength, and there are countless more benefits to getting a pump too, because this kind of training causes blood and oxygen to pool in the muscle. It also encourages other positive changes. This is a great way to increase localised growth hormone and other metabolites. It also helps to increase vascularization, permanently increasing blood supply to boost healing and energy. And don't be mistaken, bodybuilders still build max strength too. I often read statements like, bodybuilders have large but seemingly weak muscles. This is a gross misrepresentation. Sure, bodybuilders aren't as strong as powerlifters, but they're still extremely strong. Just take a look at someone like Franco Colombo, who, for a long time, was considered the strongest man on the planet. And bodybuilders don't only use isolation training, just FYI. Pretty much any bodybuilder worth their salt will still bench press, squat, and deadlift. That is the other criticism of bodybuilding, that it involves a lot of isolation training, however. That means focusing on just one muscle group, and often this is done sitting down or with the assistance of a machine. The result of isolation training is that you don't learn to move the muscle in tandem with other muscles. This not only prevents you from strengthening the stabilizers that would realistically be called into action in a real world setting, but it also prevents you from learning useful movement patterns. Consider a preacher curl, sitting down with your upper arm in a fixed position, hinging at the elbow. The bicep curl can be a useful movement. We use something similar when climbing, carrying children or shopping, getting someone in a headlock, throwing a hook. But to do any of these things, we also need to stiffen the core and generate power from the feet up. 
This may sound damning, but keep in mind that isolation training isn't a bad thing in itself. Isolation training can be a useful way to target weaker muscles, to avoid injury when training to failure, and more. This is only an issue if isolation training is the only foundation of your training. Combine it with compound moves and it serves as accessory work. Keep in mind that nearly every sport and nearly every form of strength training will have some glaring omissions when it comes to muscle development. Powerlifters famously don't move much in the transverse plane. Calisthenics athletes often struggle to build their legs equally to their upper bodies. Yogis don't practice much in the way of pulling movements. Variety and balance is key to effective functional training. And to me that means incorporating multiple different modalities of training. And in fact, the focus on creating a balanced and symmetrical physique in bodybuilding can be a huge asset. Bodybuilders are far more likely to spend time bringing up lagging muscle groups, fixing asymmetry in their calves or focusing on some external rotation to develop those rear delts. For all these reasons, bodybuilding is surprisingly functional. In fact, when you watch those strength competitions on YouTube, or Bodybuilder vs Freerunner, the bodybuilder almost always exceeds expectations. I've seen massive bodybuilders land backflips on their first attempt. Just as bodybuilding is surprisingly functional, so too is functional training surprisingly aesthetic. Just like bodybuilders, functional athletes spend a lot of time developing their strength endurance. Only they tend to do this in a more full body manner. Precisely because this is useful in a match, game or fight, functional coaches get their athletes to bound, sprint, climb and battle rope. Combine this with compound exercises that build strength and explosiveness, and you get a physique that is surprisingly shredded. Sprinting is fantastic for developing power and ripped legs. Crossfit is its own thing, but it follows many of the principles of functional training. And surprise, surprise, those athletes have shredded physiques that would make many bodybuilders proud. And the other big advantage of functional training when it comes to aesthetics is that it also focuses on areas that are often overlooked. Even bodybuilders who are keen to focus on every muscle group evenly are often guilty of ignoring the transverse plane or of not giving enough attention to their grip. Take your average bodybuilder then and get them to start doing medicine ball throws and rope climbs. Not only will this resistance cardio be the perfect option to cut fat whilst building muscle, but it'll also fill in all the gaps as it were to develop an even more rounded physique. Functional athletes have highly developed legs, shredded obliques and serratus muscles, thick powerful forearms, Add that to a bodybuilder's armour-like pectorals and massive arms, and you have a superhero-esque physique in the making. So no, I don't believe that bodybuilding and functional training should be in opposition. In fact, I think they make ideal bedfellows. And combining these types of training is surprisingly simple. Just perform more functional compound movements at the start of your workout, transition to isolation movements for high repetitions, and end with some conditioning, such as sprinting or spinning a Bulgarian bag. A PPL split is also perfectly suited to this approach. Meanwhile, if you only perform bodybuilding or only perform functional training, take comfort knowing that you're developing functional strength and aesthetics either way. Hope you found this video useful and interesting guys, let me know what you think. Do you think that bodybuilding is more functional than it looks? And do you think that functional training is a good way to develop a cool physique? If you're interested in developing a physique that is both functional and aesthetic, then you might like my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. And there I also incorporate lots of other benefits of different kinds of training, including mobility, brain function, and much more. Alternatively, if you just wanna learn about functional training and how it applies to the general population and athletes, then check out my print book, Functional Training and Beyond. Please leave a like and share this video around, it helps me out immensely. And subscribe, of course, if you want to see more like this. Hit the bell button if you want to be notified of future uploads. Thank you so much for watching this one, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.